Hey, what's up? Welcome to this tutorial on how to create a very simple scene fading using an image. And as you can take a look at here, I have just set up a very simple scene with nothing more than, well, the basic stuff and a UI with a with an image that I have just chosen to call fade image. The UI object itself is just a very basic object that you can get by right clicking in the hierarchy, go to UI and selecting canvas. Now we got all the basic stuff that you have right here, such as the rect transform, the canvas, the canvas scaler, and the, graf and the graphic ray caster. The only thing I have done other than that is putting a CSRF script on it that I have chosen to name scene fade, which has a couple of variables which we will be covering in just a second. And so what can we do with it? Well, we can simply fade an image, which is exactly what this video is about. And I have included so that we can have a set time that we will fade like for this for this fade that I have chosen to do here it will take five seconds to fade out or fade in depending on what you want and I have included the options to use color fade and use fill amount and fill amount being something that you can use if you have a sprite for an image for example this then you can use the image type which will be like simple slice tiled or filled and if you choose filled we can have a fill method of horizontal, vertical, radial 90, radial 180, and radial 360. We can have the fill origin, bottom, right, top, left. And here is the interesting part, the fill amount that controls just how much of the image we can actually see. Depending on, depending on a float value between 0 and 1. We can have it do clockwise or counterclockwise. And well, all, the, all those basic stuff. But for now... I just want to show a simple color fade. Let's go back here. I have already ticked the use color fade boolean. I have the use fill amount unticked. And let's see what happens now. Since it is 5 seconds that I have set, it will take quite some time to fade. But you can see that, that the blue color is slowly decreasing and we are starting to see more and more of the actual scene behind the image and soon enough we should see just a blank empty scene really i haven't really chosen to put that much into it but yeah so that was a slow fade we can even decrease it to like a second which will be a considerate less time but still it'll work you see pretty much instant okay let's revert that back to five or actually, 3 seems like a more reasonable number. And let's go to the fade image. We will put on like the input field background, I think. We will go to field and... Let's do a radial 360 degrees. And because of the way I have it set right now in the code, the time will decrease and not increase. So that means that as soon as we hit play, and we can choose to use the color fade as well, but we want to take the use fill amount, since we have actually said that we, was, that we want to use a kind of a fill amount here. So if we use fill amount and color fade, this is what happens. The color fades out and the image fill amount slowly decreases over time until there is nothing. If we only want to use the fill amount, we untick the use color fade boolean and play again. And exactly the same thing as before, but without the color fade. Alright, now that we have seen all that, let me revert back. To using a simple color. And let's take a look at the actual code. So here it is all in its glory. A, an extremely simple mono behavior script. That I have chosen to name scene fade. And what do we need? We need a public float fade in time. Which as you can guess by the name. Is the time it will take to fade in or fade out. Depending on other options you can configure as you will later on. We have a public image, fade image, which is basically the image we are fading in or fading out. We have two public booleans, one of them being the use fill amount boolean and the use color fade boolean. 
which controls the, in which way we want to actually fade in or fade out. And lastly, we have a private variable, which is a private color fade color, which just simply makes us able to manipulate the color of the image over time. And then we have things that we do in the start method, which is we set the fade color variable to the fade image dot color because we actually need to create a reference in order to manipulate it later. And after that, we simply start the coroutine that I've chosen the name fade in. So even though I have the update here, there is not really anything we need to do in the update method, so we can skip that and go straight to the I enumerator or coroutine fade in. So what do we do? Well, first of all, we declare a local float, which I just, uh, I usually call it just I, just because I'm used to it. And we set it equal to zero. And then we enter a while loop. And in the condition for the while loop, we say while the float I is less than the fade time. So while that's true, then we increase I we do i plus equals time dot delta time divided by fade in time, meaning that we increase i over time based on how long we want it to actually fade. And each iteration that this is happening, we check first of all, do we want to use color fade? If we do, then we set the fade color dot a, and a here being the alpha component or the transparency of the image. We set that variable. We set it equal to, and here is for the decreasing, 1 minus i divided by fade in time. And so let me explain this part of the whole thing. We want to do one float as a starting reference, because transparency is a variable that only goes between 0 and 1. So we need the 1 as a reference variable. And then from one float, we remove however far we have gotten into the fade progress. And we get the progress by doing i divided by fade in time, which is basically like the part divided by the whole. It's just basic math. Let's say that i would be half of fade in time. That would equal to 50%, which would be equal to 0.5. So if we do one float, minus 0.5, that would return 0.5, and that would set the fade color dot alpha to 0.5, meaning that it would be half transparent. And after doing that, we simply set the fade image dot color to our modified fade color. And we do that each iteration. And later after that, we check, do we, we check if the boolean use fill amount is true, meaning that we want to use fill amount. And if we do, we do pretty much the exact same thing as we did with fade color from before over here. We set the fade image dot fill amount equal to one float minus i divided by fade in time. This is basically like, uh, once again, one float minus the total percentage we have faded. And then each iteration we end with yield return null, meaning that we wait like if my memory serves me correctly, yield return null is basically the same as doing yield return new. Wait for seconds. One float. If memory serves correctly, I think that's basically the same thing as just doing null. Correct me if I'm wrong. And as such, we just do this whole operation again and again and again. Each time we increase i by time to delta time divided by fade in time. And once i is greater than or equal to fade in time, then we exit the loop and that means that we're done fading. And in case you would want to increase instead of decrease, that's really simple. All you have to do is instead of using this method, you use this method. And the same down here. Except I forgot to rename that <laughs> variable, oops. Let me fix that. There we go. And so what do we do here? We basically do the same thing as we have done over here. But instead of decreasing, we actually decrease. We remove the one float reference. And we just do fade color dot alpha equals i divided by fade in time. 
And because we don't have the one float negative, well, the percentage, we simply return the percentage. So if i is 3 fourths, um, this iteration, then we simply return 3 fourths to the fading color dot alpha, meaning that it is, well, it is more visible than it is invisible, basically. <laughs> but keep in mind that these two methods are also depending on whether you are increasing i or decreasing i. So if you were to, de to decrease i, you would basically have to revert the methods. But yeah, so if we do this, and let me do a small fix. We do fade image dot fill amount equal i divided by fade in time. And now that we have that, we can go back to the scene, and we can set this to a sprite again, we can set it to be filled, we can set the fill amount to zero, and if we were to start now, the image will increase instead of decreasing. Or it should. Did I... Yes, I did. Okay. So let's use the fill amount as well. So now, as you can see, it does things the other way around and goes from being invisible to visible while increasing the fill amount, making us able to see the whole image over time. Pretty cool, right? And if we want to do, same here. We can disable the use color fade. And simply have it being visible from the start, but still increasing the fill amount over time. Yeah, alright, so that's pretty much it. A fast and relatively easy way to do a scene fade in or fade out, depending on what you want. And with that said, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please let me know by smashing that like and sub button, leaving an awesome comment, and following me on social media. Now have a good one, and I'll see you later!